as you see any cylinder heads um they already have like this little blue die and this is called something that you call Daikin blue is machinist die and you could use I'll, I'll see if I could find some a link on Amazon that you guys could click on and be able to go straight and get some uh, die and if you're gonna do any type of porting it's something that is you know it's good to have and so that you could use to mark out wherever you're gonna be porting and so today uh, since we're going to be doing the, the chambers this is what you you need to do right we're going to open up around the valve pocket and do a little bit of chamber work you get your head gasket and you lay your gasket head gasket as you know in the in the port and as you see, as I, I died only around where I'm going to be cutting. I'm not going to be cutting anywhere here, so I didn't bother to waste any dye. So, we'll put one head bolt here, another cylinder head bolt here to help you know, keep the gasket lined up. And I'll use the back side of the razor blade. I'll be scribing a line for us to go by. All right, we'll need a head gasket from here. So you put the motor together, of course. And so from right here, um, I have these marks right out. Now it gives us a point where we're going to open up around the chambers. Now if you see the scribe mark here, where I have scribed here lightly, um, what we're going to be doing is enshrouding the valves as it, the valves open, right, especially around here air is trying to pass around the valve right and do that that swirl effect that we talked about and the more room you have to install the valve all the way around the better it's going to flow so we're just going to open around again you don't want to cut too much because if you cut too much you end up affecting your head gasket ceiling ceiling and you get too close to your water jackets and you know it cause a, a place where you could get cracks in the future and no one wants that of course so I'm gonna keep these valves here as a safety uh, a safety net so that I don't accidentally touch the seat with a carbide cutter if you touch the seat with a carbide car cutter you you'll wreck you know the seats so I have these valves in here these are going to be these are garbage valves and um, we just have them sitting there in place just to protect the seats and I'll be opening it up I already predetermined that to start we'll be using this cutter and again we're gonna just come around here slowly and take away material on both intake and exhaust and just enough to uh, and shroud the valve some and then we'll come and we're also going to take down and reshape a little bit around the spark plug here uh, it's, if you're running nitrous you don't want any sharp edges so you would like to while you're here you break all the edges so that you don't have any hot spots to that will cause crack even if you're running boost any type of force induction you don't want to have any hot spots in the in the chamber so you want to break the edge and have a nice smooth contour you don't want to go too crazy either so the more crazy you you go the less compression you have you were really opening up the chamber so the bigger the chamber the less cc's it is and the less compression you have so try not to go too crazy but at the same time you know you just want to massage everything 
so that you're getting the best flowing port and the most efficient port as possible. So because I have a little bit of chaos here, um, the camera won't show you that because I won't show you that. Um, I'll move the camera a little bit on the angle and you will be watching me work on the angle. So hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps. Um, and I really appreciate it. Okay. I decided to change the bit. I only go out with this bit. And um, I think this, this bit is going to work out a little bit better for me. Mostly because it's just shorter. And um, when I, again, when I cut, just very little. Just enough to ensure out the valves and so that it can continue that swirl effect. So I just finished uh, this this chamber. I didn't go crazy doing it. I just uh, spent about 15 minutes on it in total, and shrouded the valves and polished up the chamber some, and that's it. Realistically, anything more than this is just cos cosmetic, and you're really you're not really gaining anything. You can dig in and reshape the port a little bit more, especially if you're going to be angle milling and stuff like that. But for your basic in and out port job, you're just going to unshroud the valves a little bit in the chamber, break all the edges, and polish the chamber out some. All this is going to be covered up mostly with carbon pretty soon anyway, so it, it's not uh, a, a huge factor. And, and trying to get everything super polished and everything, it, it's just not going to remain that way, realistically. It, the most important thing you can do here is enshroud the valves and break the edges, especially if you plan to run any type of boost or nitrous. And that's it. So, that's it. I hope you enjoy. This is pretty much how to do a chamber. It only took me about 15 minutes on this one port. So 15 minutes times how many cylinders you got, that's give or take how long it's going to take you to uh, do your cylinder head. So I hope you enjoy, and again, this is Bro Joe's Builds. Please like, share, and subscribe. It really helps me out, and I hope you have a blessed day. Take care.